night I filmed this clip is just like so many nights I've had using this camera. A camera that I once called my dream camera. But is it still my dream camera? That's what we're talking about today. YouTube, what is good? Today we are talking about a camera that is very special to me. Check that out right there. That is the Leica QP. Arguably the most beautiful camera ever made. I mean, look at that. How can you not love that? Oh, it's the best. Today we are talking about if this is still my dream camera. And if you don't know, basically a year ago, give or take about a week, I got this camera and I made a video about it titled Finally Using My Dream Camera because at the time it was. I had wanted a Leica Q so bad for years, probably like since the time I started photography, I wanted a Leica, and the Q always struck me as the perfect option. Well now, a year later, after using this thing a lot, I've used this camera more than any other camera that I own, is it still my dream camera? And would I recommend the Leica Q to anyone out there who is interested in it? Especially given the fact that Leica now has the Leica Q2, which has taken over the spot of this thing, and it's made the Q and the QP a relatively affordable Leica. I'm not saying it's affordable, that's like the wrong word, but for Leicas you can actually get these for kind of a deal. So would I get another one? Is it still my dream camera? Did it live up to all the hype that I gave it in my head? Let's talk about it today. So first of all, the pros of this camera, the things that I love to this day. One, how amazing it looks. I mean, the QP itself, that matte black finish right here, and it's pretty crazy. This PVD coat or whatever this is, it doesn't scratch. I mean, I barely have any scratches on the bottom of this camera, and I have not treated it nicely. I mean, this has been a camera that you've seen me use in a lot of videos. I've taken it out on street photography. I've set it down on the ground. I've used it for work, and I've had no issues with blemishes or scratching or anything like that, which is pretty impressive. I've dropped the lens cap quite a few times as well, and as you can see, there are no major scratches or anything like that on there. So pretty impressive by Leica that they figured out a way to have this coating that is so durable. So that's number one. Number two, this lens, insane. I mean, you really can't beat a 28 millimeter Leica F 1.7 lens. This lens by itself, if you bought it alone, costs more than a Leica Q does now. So you're getting pretty good value with the lens that comes attached to this camera. Image quality is fire. Yes, the megapixels are only in the 20s. I can't remember the exact number. So there is a few times where I did wish that I had more resolution, but all in all, the image quality you get from this thing, fantastic. And also the Leica colors. Now, people make the argument that Fujifilm has better colors, that other cameras do colors better, whatever. We're not going to argue about that today. The colors that come out of these DNG files on this Leica QP, I can't speak for other Leica cameras, but for this camera specifically, the way the colors edit, it just feels natural. They just work. If you're going to change a green more towards the yellow side or a green more towards the green side, it does exactly what you think it should do. Now, I'd say the biggest pro of this camera to me is it just does what it's supposed to do. I don't know what it is about the way this camera is designed, the minimal approach. It just works. It works exactly how a camera should work. And it's not something I can necessarily describe. I know a lot of people are watching this video getting mad at me right now saying all cameras work the same. I'm telling you, at least for me, you pick this thing up, you use it. It has a completely different feel and vibe and just essence to it. And I love that about this camera. It's one of the reasons I always end up picking it up because it just works the way it needs to and it doesn't have anything extra or anything more than I really need. So when you take all those positive attributes that I just talked about and then combine them into a form factor like this, a camera so small and so convenient, it pretty much becomes the option that you always want to pick up. Given the option, if this camera is going to work for what I'm going to shoot, I always end up grabbing this thing. But that doesn't mean there aren't certain things that I dislike about this camera and things that aren't so great about it. First thing being, the convenience size is only convenient to a point. Yes, you're getting full frame. Yes, you're getting these awesome colors that I enjoy. Yes, you're getting this fantastic lens. But if you want a camera that you're just going to throw into your pocket, it's too big. It's not going to work. The lens is still big on here. So if you're going to call this a point and shoot camera, it's not that. It's kind of its own thing. It's like a half point and shoot, half normal lens camera thing. So you're kind of stuck in this like convenience limbo zone where you get a lot of the convenience of a point and shoot camera, but not all of it. And something like a Fujifilm X100F, I will say is more convenient than this camera. You can put that in your back pocket, in your side pocket. It's very easy to carry. Whereas this, 
you ain't putting this in any pockets unless you have a hoodie or something like that. So there is a level of inconvenience that comes with this camera that is beaten out by other point and shoot cameras that can probably get you a similar result. Am I gonna say it's the same result? No, I think this is a better camera than the X100F by Fujifilm, but I think that if convenience is the biggest thing for you, you have a debate there. You might wanna go with the Fuji because of how much smaller of a form factor it is with that little lens. Now I did just get done raving about how awesome the minimal qualities on this thing are, how much I love the simplistic elements of the Leica camera, but that once again only works to a certain point. There are times where I'm using this camera and I find myself wishing, I wish there was an interval timer on this, I wish there was some more modern features, maybe something like eye autofocus, especially when you have this thing at f1.7, but here's the thing, it's a Leica camera, so when you're buying this thing, you kinda have to expect that you're gonna get this basic minimal thing. Now granted, I don't know if any of these features have been added into the Q2, I don't think they have. It's one of those things where you only miss the features you don't have when you need them. And when you need them, it's a real big inconvenience to not have them in the camera. The interval timer is the big one for me because y'all know a lot of times when I go out and film these videos, I'll make photos of myself. I need to make photos of myself for thumbnails and things like that. So for me, if I wanna do that, I have to manually focus the camera, then set the camera to a timer and then run out in front of the camera like I'm a dad making this old school family portrait 20 years ago, it's not the greatest situation, but I don't always need that. So once again, you're teetering on this balancing point of how many features do you need and are you gonna need them more often than not. Now, weather sealing is another one of those features where you don't need it until you really need it. And for me, y'all know I like to go out and make photos in the rain quite a bit. So an option like the Q2, it makes a lot more sense than something like this because the Q2 is weather sealed. It can take rain and water and all that stuff. Whereas this, I really have to worry about water getting into the camera, potentially moving through the speakers on the top. It's just not built to handle water the same way the Q2 is. So it's once again, one of these features where does it need weather sealing most of the time? No, but when I'm in a situation where I want it and where I need it, this camera doesn't have it and it becomes an inconvenience. So there are these little nitpicks and little things that make this not so much of a perfect camera that can't fit into every single scenario you want it to fit into. And the problem is, the price tag on this camera reflects a camera that should be able to do all that. So what this does is it puts this camera in basically a niche spot in your camera bag where you can use it for basically everything until you can't use it and then you need something else. So if you're in a position where you don't have the luxury to have that option of, okay, I'm gonna use this until I need that other camera that I have in my bag, it doesn't make sense to buy this thing as a standalone. Does that make sense? Basically, if you can only have one camera, there is no reason to be buying this. And that's kind of a bummer. I wish more people could take advantage of Leica and experience it, but it just doesn't really make sense for someone who's trying to be a professional and have a camera that can do everything because most Leica cameras are very niche to the thing that they're built for. And the price tag also reflects the Leica branding, which not everyone likes. So taking all that into consideration, is the Leica QP still my dream camera? Am I glad that I bought this thing? Do I regret buying it? Was it worth the money? Would I buy it again? It was worth it. I love this camera. It's still probably my favorite camera that I've ever used in my entire life. It is amazing, but it's not perfect. And because it's not perfect, I can't always recommend it to everyone. Given the option, if I didn't have this thing now, I would still buy it and I think I'd still enjoy it. I've used it so much on this channel. I use it so much for street photography. I use it so much for work. It just gets the job done and it works great for me. Now I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel limited sometimes while using this camera. I wish Leica made a version that had an 85 or a 50 on it. I would buy both of those cameras, have them in my bag and just call it a day. But unfortunately those don't exist. The Q2 does sound cool with its extra megapixels you can punch in and get kind of like a 50 millimeter crop factor on that camera and still maintain resolution. So. Who knows, maybe down the line I will pick up a Q2, we'll see. After using Leica for a year, I understand why they're such polarizing cameras because everyone sees the value in the tools they're using differently. And for some people, they don't see the value in a camera like this. And that's completely understandable. But for me, this was the camera that opened the door to Leica for me. And ever since I got it and ever since I've been using it, I've been thinking more and more about other Leica cameras and how much I would enjoy something like an M to get those other focal lengths. But I'm dealing with the same thing everyone else deals with. Is it worth it? Do I spend $6,000 on a camera that doesn't have autofocus? I don't know.
That's what the interesting thing about Leica is. That's why it's so polarizing. It's up for you to decide is there value in all these other intangibles that Leica brings to the table outside of what the cameras actually do. So yeah, one year later, still loving this thing, still using it all the time. If you saw the last vlog on the channel, you saw I took this thing out and made so many photos with it and I loved those images. I liked them more than the Nikon photos. So for me, love this thing. But is it for everyone? Don't think so. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you have a Leica? Do you want one Q2, Q, QP? What's the camera for you? Let's just uh, talk and don't go crazy down there. Leica gets people really mad in the YouTube comments. But uh, yeah, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for letting me sit down and talk with you, give you kind of like a year in review on this camera. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe. See y'all next time.